Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that we've had on the program in the past. Of course, you may remember him from what his current promotion, Combates America, or maybe in his fight on Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. It is John Castaneda. John, man, I appreciate the time. It has been some time since we, we've had a chance to talk here. I haven't had a chance to talk to you since the, the, the one-night tournament. Um, you know, obviously there, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, a lot of luck is, has to go into as well. You get to the finals, unfortunately could, couldn't get the win, but what, what is the biggest takeaway you just take from that night? Yeah, no, first and foremost, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, once again, um, but uh, in terms of the, the eight man tournament, it, it was something that, that was so far fetched. I mean, it's nothing that you can really prepare for. Um, we tried to simulate, uh, what the night would go like in practice, you know, day in and day out. But I'll tell you what, it wasn't anything like practice, that's for sure. Um, you know, three fights, three different fighters, three different styles, um, all within about a two-hour span. So it was, it was pretty hectic, um, to say the least. The, the first, you know, the first fight went went pretty easy, you know, one-round fight. Uh, the second fight with Mark Gomez was, you know, uh, uh, a close fight. You know, it could have gone either way is, is uh, how everyone kind of perceives it, you know, I – I think that personally, after breaking down the video and watching the fight again, um, I won the first two rounds. I secured him pretty, uh, pretty dominantly, and then he won the third one. So you know, 29-28 all across the board is what I got, and that's actually what the the judges uh, scored the fight. So uh, nothing out of surprise there. And you know, by the third fight, I was, man, I was pretty exhausted. I was beat up from the second fight. Um, I, I I'd like to say that I, I thrived the most in a professional setting in a sense of one fight one opponent, one style to focus on, uh, three, five minute rounds. That's, that's where I thrive. Um, before the tournament, you know, I was on a 10 fight win streak, um, in that setting, in the, the normal professional fight setting, the one night, you know, like I said, one night, one opponent. Um, and that's what I, that's what I plan to do with Mark Gomez. You know, this is, uh, especially knowing that, that, um, I've already beat him. Um, I know, I know I have what it takes to beat him. I know his flaws. I know his strengths. And I'm just ready to go out there and, and take care of business again. Did this rematch make sense to you when it was first, you know, <laughs> approached to you? You know what? I, um, I I really actually wanted the rematch with uh, with Levy, uh, Levy Marquine, the guy I fought in the finals. Um, <clears throat> I think honestly, Mark Gomez is just a good draw. Uh, he he he's got a lot of got a lot of fans that follow Combat America. You know, they probably wanted the rematch, and so that's why it's happening. You know, and. And for me, I, I have no problem with it. Um, like I said, if it, it's a close fight, if it was absolutely, you know, one, one sided one, you know, three round, absolutely dominance, I'd be like, you know, this makes no sense for me. Beating the same guy twice, um, isn't going to make me better. You know, it's not going to put me in the rankings any higher. Um, but seeing as, as how it was a close fight, absolutely. You know, I, I thought, I thought it made sense and I was more than willing to have more, more than happy to take the rematch. One of the cliches we hear in the fight game is the, the fighter who lost the first fight has the advantage in the second fight. Obviously, you're not going to agree with that because you, right. you, you feel you have the advantage. Why, why would you say you ha- is is your biggest one of your biggest advantages in this fight is the fact of I know I've already beat him and he knows he already lost to me. Um, you know what? No, that's that that is an advantage. I'm going to say that um, it's more so of like that's more of like a mental advantage, I would say. Um, knowing that somebody basically outgrinded me in a, in a three round fight, you know, I'd, I'd absolutely be hesitant, you know, that'd be in the, in the back of my head, uh, no doubt. But I think, um, like I said, that's one of the small advantages. A bigger one would be that me and him actually got to do some training together, um, well before the tournament. Um, actually, actually on two different occasions, we were flown out to do, uh, promotional videos, pictures, media, stuff like that for the event. And, um, I would get a rental car every time, you know, I think we were in LA once and then we were in Miami once and I would get a rental car to be able to train at the local gyms while I'm on these trips, you know, I can't just not be training. And, um, being as one of the only guys that spoke Spanish and English, um, uh, in the tournament and I could communicate with Mark, uh, with Mark, you know, he's being, um, him being a Spaniard and only speaking, uh, uh, Spanish with that, you know, obviously the Spain dialect, but, um, he would ask me if he can come train with me. And I was like, absolutely, man. You know, and I, at the time I knew that we were in the tournament together and we just honestly kind of assumed that we were going to be on opposite sides of the bracket. And we, we always joked about it. We were like, Hey, I'll see you in the finals. And we're like, yeah, dude, we'll see you in the finals. Well, um, long story short, I got a lot of training with them. Um, I, I got to kind of, you know, see what his strengths are and what his weaknesses are. And like, like I said, you know, we, we really got to, um, 
I guess we got really got close and, and uh, in a sense of just training together pretty, you know, pretty frequently a couple, you know, we were there for a week long and we trained together every single day and we'd partner up too. So um, I knew going into that fight that I had an advantage um, because of our, our time together in the practice room. You know, I, I, had, I had the advantage on the ground. My jiu-jitsu was stronger. Um, I was more explosive and, and, uh, and just quicker, you know, and quicker than him. And I, I knew that going into the fight. So then when I, when I saw the brackets, you know, just a few days prior to the event, um, and I knew that I was going to see Mark in the second round because I knew he was going to take care of business first round. He knew, he knew the same thing. And I, that was my mental edge. You know, I, I had, uh, I had an advantage because I had trained with him recently. So, you know, when you have a guy you've trained with, but now you've also fought him, do you take more right. out of the training sessions as opposed to those three rounds that you had back in November? No, absolutely not. You know, I'm, I'm just giving you an example as to, uh, you know, the, the many different advantages that I have uh, going into this third fight. You know, I um, there I think that they're both, you know, both of them. Uh, I, I took I took a little bit of both um, good, good pieces of information from both our training sessions and our fight. But more so our fight. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I saw his tendencies in a live fight. And, you know, and you know, that's when it matters. You know, you could be some people are really, really, really good in the practice room. And when it comes to perform, you know, there's just so many things that you can't really simulate, you know, the crowd, the pressure, the adrenaline, the adrenaline dump, um, you know, it's just, it's all these things. And so I was able to see how he performed, um, how slow he starts, you know, obviously everything can change from one fight to the next, but I have a pretty good idea of what Mark Gomez is going to try to do to me. You know, and it's interesting you bring that up about it. And I was listening to somebody the other day where they were talking about like, there, there's just a huge difference from hey, you can be a you know a Hall of Fame guy in the gym, but all of a sudden you get into an arena where there's five, ten thousand, fifteen thousand people, it drastically changes. And, and there's just some guys who, who who can't you know basically become that fighter. For you, you've been in these situations. Why do you think that is? Of why some guys just can't elevate to that level. You know, I, that's a good question. Like, like you've said, I, I've been here in this situation uh, plenty of times, you know, main event, headlining a card for Combate Americas. You know, um, the, the thing that's going to be different, though, is I've never had a rematch. Um, I've never, never had a rematch with an opponent, so it'll be, it'll be interesting. But in, in a sense of the guys making that, that level to that, that next transition, you know, to be able to perform well in the practice room and then also in the, you know, in the arena is, I think, just um, comfortability and uh, experience. You know, for me – I had 16 amateur fights and this is about to be my 20th professional fight. You know, that's over 35 fights in general. You know, I, I'm, I like to think of myself as, you know, a seasoned veteran, you know, I've been in that cage a long period of time. So I know exactly what it feels like. I know, you know, what the nerves feel like. I know like the, the hesitation and everything, you know, and Mark as well, Mark, Mark is 20 and 11. He's had over 30 fights as well. That's just in his pro career. You know, I don't know much about his amateur career, but I'm sure, you know, he's he's the same. You know, we, we both were able to turn it on and kind of focus in on the fight. How do you see the victory coming in this matchup? Um, I think it's going to end early, you know, a lot earlier than um, than last time, obviously, you know, going to a decision. I've been working a lot on uh, on my boxing, my striking. Um, I know that, that I always have the advantage on the on the ground with Mark. Um, uh, Jiu-jitsu, wrestling, anything like that. But I'm looking for a quick finish in the first round. In terms of your boxing, have you done anything different for this matchup than as opposed to the tournament? Absolutely. So uh, I actually just got done. Um, I was out in Arizona training at the MMA lab for about three weeks. Um, I'm actually they they postponed my fight, so I was supposed to fight March 23rd, and so it was going to go right up until my camp was over. But now that they bumped it up to April 13th, um, I'm actually home for just a, a, a few, uh, short amount of time, and then I'm actually headed back to finish camp at the MMA lab. Um, where they have, you know, a lot of lengthy strikers like Mark Gomez is, you know, he's, you know, for a Bantam weight, he's like 5'10", which is, you know, kind of on the taller side. Um, they have a lot of good bodies there, a lot of high level guys that um, kind of simulate his style. So um, that that's kind of one, one thing that I've incorporated into my camp this time, you know, but it doesn't matter where you go, you know, there's no, there's no secret sauce, there's no secret recipe to success in the sport, you know, they're, it's just different looks, you know, um, that's, that's essentially all it is. You know, I'm training out of, out of the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy here in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, high level coaching, high level teammates here as well. I'm just getting different looks, you know, um, that and that's essentially all it is. In terms of, you know, spending time at the lab and also back home in Minnesota, who's going to be in your corner for this matchup? Uh, my corners are going to be Greg Nelson 
uh, out of the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy, uh, John Crouch, and then from, from the MMA lab, and then also Dan Moret, my corner, who's been in my corner every single fight of my professional career. Obviously, everyone knows Craig, everyone knows John, and what they've accomplished in the sport. How are they different coaches? Um, you know what? That's that's crazy. They're they're actually so much alike, and that's why I've been I've been so blessed to have you know the greatest and top tier coaches from from the get go of this sport. Um, my very first coach in in college, crew Ray White, who now uh, trains out of uh, I'm sorry, he coaches out of the Michigan top team um, in Michigan. So he's he's a Muay Thai coach over there, and then transitioned into the academy with Greg Nelson. Both John John Crouch and uh, Greg Nelson are very personable guys. Um, they like to break down technique. Um, specific to you, you know, obviously they're running a group class, group MMA team, but, um, they're, they're, like I said, they're really personal. They'll break stuff down that you're doing wrong and focus on you when it's your time. You know what I mean? It's, if you have a fight coming up, they're going to focus on you. They're going to give you the stuff that you need, the technique that you need. Coach and John are both, or I'm sorry, coach Greg and John are both, uh, super nice in the sense of like, they'll watch various videos on your opponent. They'll watch his tendencies. They'll break all these videos down and kind of come up with a game plan as to what, what you need to do to be victorious. But, of course, uh, we're still a couple weeks away from this matchup. April the 13th, come back to his America. John, man, as always, I appreciate time. And, of course, let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, you guys can find me at uh, Instagram, John Castaneda underscore. Otherwise, uh, Twitter at SexyMexy135. Um, yeah, happy to, have, happy to put on a performance on April 13th. You guys tune in.